Welcome, guys. Welcome to Garvey Oval. It's going to be a fantastic day. Grand finals, under 16s, Division 4. Hawthorne Citizens versus Park Orchards. Uh, can I get uh, the Hawthorne Sits boys and the Park Orchards boys in front of the rooms here, please, so we can play the national anthem? Also, quick note, happy Father's Day to all the fathers here. Once again, welcome. And uh, can we have everyone upstanding for the Australian National Anthem? As teams make their way into the 6-6-6 positions for this under-16s Div 4 grand final between the Park Orchards under-16s boys and the Hawthorne Sits under-16s boys. It's probably the grand final we didn't expect in this Div 4 battle coming up in throughout the home and away season. The Hawthorne Sits finishing in second spot the home and away season with an 11-5 and five record. The Park Orchards finishing 9-7. and seven. So it is a case of second versus fourth from the home and away season. It'll be Hawthorne to kick to the Plenty Road end of Garvey Oval. Umpire holds the TW Sharon aloft and we are underway here for the Div 4 under-16s grand final. So 
a hot contest early. This is the second of three grand finals, junior boy grand finals we've got here at Garvey Oval today. And it's an early goal, I think. It is indeed. It's a fast start for Hawthorne. Well, if you heard him in the huddle before the game, they said they were going to kick the first goal, and they have indeed. Nick Bennett has kicked the first goal off the deck. Sensational start to Hawthorne. And, well, if the first game was a sign of things to come, they might be in for a double treat here, the sits. So, one straight six. Hawthorne to Park Orchards. Yet to score on the Community Bank. Doncaster, Eastern Templestowe Village scoreboard. Paul Sebastiani here with you. It's a fast start. For Hawthorne here at Garvey Oval, ball works its way towards the front half of the centre square for Park Orchards. They go up towards centre half forward. Clearing kick from Merry. Chopped off though. Park Orchards go inside forward, 50 and a mark. Taken 45 metres out. Pretty much directly in front by Luke Mariner. Plenty of players getting set on the goal line here. Tough kick to make the distance. AFL players at the elite level would probably struggle to make the distance from this range. Mariner. After tying his shoelace, would be a lot of his 30 seconds on the spot. And he's going to dink one up towards the hot spot. And I get a mark. Nice little set play there from Park Orchards. And they'll get an early shot on goal as well. Lockie O'Keefe marking pretty much unopposed in the end. Kick from basically directly in front. 25 metres out. For the answer back goal. He's got it. One straight apiece here at Garvey Oval. Responding goal from Park Orchards. George Crayer with the goal. Fast start for both teams here inside the opening handful of minutes. One straight six apiece on the Community Bank, Doncaster East and Templestowe Village scoreboard. Ball back in the middle. Rucks go at it and it's going to be Park Orchard to win a clearing kick up towards centre half forward off hands. Spinning their way, spins his way through trouble. Does Jackson kick up towards the top of the goal square? It's off hands and rush through for one behind. James Moore rushing that one through. Hawthorne waste no time. Up from the back. Oh, nearly one of the marks of the year. To Burley. Umpire call play on. Just dropped it at the critical stage. And they go again. Park Orchard's trying to lock this ball inside their front half. They do indeed. Little dinky kick forward. From Pecker. Works his way up towards half forward. Around right about 45 metres out from the Park Orchard's goal. Getting back is Noonan. These defensive duties, they all set themselves. Up went Stamp from the back. Clearing kick forward by the goal kicker in Crayer. And his kick is chopped off though. Good mark taken by Hicks. And he can transfer play towards the outer side. Up by calls play on. Evans. It's ball to the middle of Garvey Oval. Just bounce over the head of his intended targeting Josh Day. And now Park Orgers can clean up the mess across half back. Kick up towards the attacking side of the centre square. Handball out from Waterford in between three Hawks. Tackle pressure is on early. A little handball inside was good. Contello trying to paddle it out in front of himself was Blasser. He couldn't win possession of the ball. to run about 35 metres out from the Park Orchards goal. Handball out again from Blasser. It's a flying shot up towards the top of the goal square. Really well read by James Moore. Comes across, takes the intercept mark. Goes quickly off the step. His kick over the head of his target. 
Pecker getting involved for Park Orchards. Handball over the top. This all across half forward here. Stacks on the football and the umpire blows the whistle for a stoppage. Just as the sits were about to break away with that ball, but from the stoppage, Stamp gets his kick up towards half forward umpire call play on was touched off hands and the umpire has called for a throw in. Looked like it was Kallick who just ran that over the boundary line and out of play. So an early one point advantage to the Park Orchards. They've had the ball played in their front half for pretty much the majority of this term. Got about five minutes in. So a clearing ball up towards half forward for Park Orchards. It's a two on two, just a pure two on two battle. O'Keefe. Boundary line beats them all again though. And the ball will stay over the outer side here at Garvey Oval. If you're just tuning in, it's a, a cold spring day here at Garvey Oval. Muddy conditions underfoot on the deck. Rain looks like it will stay away for the time being, although the grey overcast clouds suggest we might get some later on in the day as a free kick for holding the ball goes away. The Park Orchards, and they go inside forward 50 ball out the back of the contest. They're getting involved again. Is James Moore with an intercept mark again? Waste no time off a step. It's a beautiful kick. Noonan was run down from behind, almost leg, but umpire deemed it to be holding the ball. Great tackle by Fordington on the left boot off a step. High ball up and under. Moore again taking a great mark. That's three intercept marks early for the young man. Showing his aerial prowess. Deep in defence for Hawthorne. Ball up towards half four. That's a sensational mark. Great set of hands from Burley. Went up and nearly took one of the marks of the year. Ball out wide and we'll have it tossed in. So early signs good for Park Orchards. They lead it by a point. They've been able to go inside 50 a handful of times, but the defence of Hawthorne has been able to stand up, in particular young James Moore, who's taken three intercept marks early in this game. Clearance by Park Orchards. They've got a 2 on one here, though, in favour of the assist ball. Did it bounce kindly, though. Blazza was in there trying to win possession of the ball. Hawthorne, they've got numbers around this contest. Stepping back into trouble was Merry. Kick around the body. It's been chopped off. Cray is out wide here asking for the football. That's ignored. Ball up towards half forward. Out came Mariner. Fisted it away from his opponent. Trying to burst his way through trouble is Hicks. Step back into trouble. Mariner one possession back. Look for the handball. Came inside. Jackson with a kick up towards 45 metres out on the mark taken by Devitt. And he'll go back 45 metres out. Slight angle. Not a bad crowd bubbling about here at Garvey Oval. As Devitt goes up towards the top of the square and an uncontested mark. I think it's Crayer again. Getting involved early. And he's going to line up for his second goal of the match. So Crayer, we're right behind this from the broadcast position. Steady approach. Kick just came off his instep and stayed out to the left. So 1-2 plays one straight. Park Orchards lead it. So Moore drives this ball outside defensive 50. Well, that had to be a push in the back. A fair income push in the back, that was. And Burley will take the resulting free kick. Again, Waste No Time comes in with that risky kick on the 45 degree. It's a good kick as well, and now it opens up the field. Stamby, cross half back, kick out wide is okay. Goes laterally. Crayer stands the mark. See what he can conjure up, his kick out wide. Got a couple of targets there, one in Evans. Vaughan trying to win possession across half back, the kick. Had to retreat to Hicks. He was wrapped up as soon as he won an umpire calling play on. Park 
Orchards do well to win possession back being dispossessed was Jackson. Little dinky kick around the corner from Hicks. Gained about 15 metres. Ball's going to come back from whence it came. Potentially the sanctuary of the boundary line for Hawthorne. Being dispossessed there is Evans. Crowd wanted holding the ball. And the umpire is going to call for a ball in. So, ball has been stuck in the front half for Park Orchards for the better part of this quarter. Twelve and a half minutes remain in the opening stanza from the restart. Who's going to win possession? Crayer, geez, he's been lively early, the young man. Gets involved again. Tried to extract the footy. Got the handball out. It was a very smart handball to Cantello, and he's shot towards goal the near side. So they're peppering away early here. Fun straight plays 1-3 on the Community Bank Doncaster East and Temple Stowe Village scoreboard. Ball's retrieved now. We'll get play back underway. More with a driving ball outside. Defensive 50. Burley went up and he's going to get another free kick for a push in the back. His presentation up at the ball has been strong. It's a high up and under ball towards centre wing. Crayer sat under it. Dropped the chest mark. Umpire called a free kick for a high. Another possession for George Crayer. And his kick touched off the mark. You can hear the umpire call play on. Handball forward. So, little dinky kick off the ground. Merry was in there for Hawthorne. Hovering over the top of the ball is Elam. So, they manufacture a clearance. Hawthorne up towards halfback. It's outside a dangerous area. It might come back in though. Pecker. Getting involved. Kick off the ground from Cameron. Might work out in the end, but Hawthorne are going to look to try to get the rebound 50. It's a real scrappy pill at the moment, Crayer. Tries to find his way through trouble. Clearing ball outside, though. And Hawthorne get the mark. They go out wide. Smart kick as well. Joshua Day comes out, takes the mark across half forward. The little kick inside forward 50. Not the best. It was off hands. Umpire, crowd wanted high. Burley may have been taken over the shoulder, but the umpire is eventually going to call holding the ball instead. So Ryan did really well to intercept that ball all across half forward here for Hawthorne, and now they get a chance to go inside forward 50 again and potentially gain some possession and lock this ball inside their front half which they haven't really been able to do it's all been one-way traffic in favor of the park orchards but they haven't been able to put it on the scoreboard either high up and under ball cantello had it well fisted away from him went back in there to try to lay the tackle he did may have got his opponent without an umpire call play on cray he's in an acre of space if he can pick it up and go he does a little dinky kick over the top is okay so blazer his kick sheriff round the body Inside forward 50. Mariner got the little handball out. Was okay. Back to Blazer. His kick around the body. Mark was dropped by Devitt. Gets a handball to Mariner who strides into an open goal and gets it. <laughs> Gotta love the start of Luke Mariner. Looked dangerous up forward early for Park Orchards and gets their second. Two, three plays, one straight. Back underway in the middle. This time it's Luxton. Gets possession of the ball. Driving ball forward from Evans. His kick out wide towards Pastrenia. And was he held without it? He was. 
Oh, and there's a bit on it. Westmore getting involved. He'll take the resulting free kick across half forward for Hawthorne. Ball inside, 450. Elam the target, out the back of the contest. Park Orchard's called into defensive duty now. Crayer getting involved. Ball bobbling around there at the moment. It's all around about 25 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Series of handballs and Crayer gets a clearing kick. It'd be up to nearly double figure possessions, a young man. He's been very dominant. And a crunching tackle. But holding the man. It'll be a free kick to Park Orchards. Just quickly see who that is. If get a feel of the number there. The player making his way from the field. Regardless, so Park Orchards go up towards half forward. Mariner comes out and takes the mark. So Mariner with a high ball up towards half forward. Moore went up off hands. And looks like it's Cantalo. So Cantalo is the one who's made his way from the ground. Sort of clutching at his ribs as he got slung down in that tackle earlier. But Pecker with a ball inside forward 50 well chopped off. Bond coming out to take the mark. Gets this one up towards half forward, uh, half back rather. Naismith with the intercept mark. Him and Burley will be locked in the battle all day by the looks of it. And looks like it's that man again in more. His fourth intercept mark for the day. Burley the target, just through his hands and over the boundary line and out of play. Balls button back in. Crayer around the contest. Intercepted. End over end ball towards half forward. Hawthorne getting the clearing kick up towards centre wing. Pecker comes out to take the mark though. So right inside the field of play. Driving ball up towards half forward. Almost the mark. Devitt. So round about... 50 metres out from the Park Orchards goal. Boundary line will beat the ball. We'll have it tossed in. On straight six, place two through 15. Park Orchards lead it on the Community Bank, Doncaster East and Templestowe Village scoreboard. This the under-16s Diff 4 grand final at Garvey Oval here at Parade College. So, from the restart. Waterford. Snap around the body. It's a mark. I think it's Devitt. It is indeed. Jalen Devitt will go back 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. We've got a couple of players there on the goal line. Would require his best kick. So Devitt, that's skewed right off the side of his boot. And they get a mark anyway. Mariner. This for an early 15 point buffer to Park Orchards. 20 metres out, 45 degree angle. Goal umpire trots out to the right and that's where that ball stays. So a let off for Hawthorne. He has been dangerous today, has Mariner up in the forward line. But wasn't able to hit the scoreboard there. So... Driving ball outside, defensive 50. A big fly again from the back. Westmore went up, couldn't take the mark. It's about 55 metres out from the park orchards. Goal umpire crosses himself and says, I'll wall it up. So, ball tossed up. Clearing kick forward by Westmore. 
plays around this contest. Waddy won the clearing ball. It's right into the middle of the ground. Dangerous position. Hecker was in there. Crayer was in there as well. Handball sharked out by Wallace towards Crayer. Back inside forward 50. Devitt tried to juggle it out in front of himself. Had it. He was worried out of it by McCabe. And the umpire's caught a whistle on the play. A high free kick going the way of Park Orchards. Ball inside forward 50 off hands. Bond dropped the uncontested mark. It's about, about 35 metres out from goal. Mariner sharked out the handball. Kick up towards the top of the square. It's off hands. A snap towards goal from point blank range. Buglers kicked it. 3 4 22 plays one straight six on the community bank. Doncaster East at Temple State Village scoreboard. Fast start for Park Orchards making the most now of their. Dominant play inside their forward half, and they've skipped out to a 16 point lead. So, back underway in the middle. <coughs> and the umpire will do it all again. It's interesting to see. Hawthorne look like they've tried to mark Crayer here. He tried to get possession of the football, ripping it out of the contest there. was Waterford, just got a clearing kick. Only went as far as Stanby. He's driving ball up towards half forward, off hands. Pecker went back the other way. Crayer went. In there to try to win possession, was dispossessed. Tackle laid by Crown Pie, calls play on, but now he calls for a ball up. So, just under a minute to go in the first term. Westmore. That's holding the ball. That is holding the ball. Great pressure from Park Orchards. So, Sutherland. He's driving ball up towards centre half forward out the back of the contest. It's a dangerous area. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And we'll get a stoppage 30 metres out from the Park Orchards goal. They lead it 3 4 22 to 1 straight 6. They're going to be the team who has, if there is a last shot on goal, if they're able to conjure up something from this stoppage. Rucks go at it. Jackson went in. Mariner was slung as he kicked it. It fell to Devon as he kicked the goal. No, it's across the face. Right on the quarter time siren. Here at Garvey Oval, it is the Park Orchards. 3-5-23 to the Hawthorne Citizens. One straight six on the Community Bank Doncaster East and Templestowe Village scoreboard. Goal kickers to quarter time. George Crayer with the first. And then Luke Mariner nabbed the second. Oscar Bugler with the third. And the goal kickers for Hawthorne. Nicholas Bennett kicked the first of the day. And he was the sole goal kicker for Hawthorne at quarter time. It is Park Orchard, 3-5-23. The Hawthorne Citizens, one straight six. Paul Sebastiani here with you. We'll be back for second term action right after the quarter time break. Hi everyone, Helen from Game Face here and I'm visiting Proven's Timber and Hardware today in Clifton Hill. 
Third generation owned by the Rosenberg family, Provins is where you can come for all your extension and renovation needs. So my name's Marnie Rosenberg. Um, my brother and I, Jared, run the business here at Provins Minor 10 with our dad, Barry. So my grandfather bought the business in 1966 and now we're third generation and yeah, we're serving the community and Provins has been around for over 100 years. We're super lucky, most of our customers are extremely loyal so we get return customers all the time. Um, we do get customers who are doing their own renovations so we do support the local community with, um, DIYs. Um, we are predominantly a trade business but we love our local community and servicing them for all their flooring, your decking, your cladding, your mouldings, door handles, everything to do with the whole of house. Actually we're running a cat promotion so all the cat workwear, clothing and accessories spend $100 in a transaction and you go into the draw to win a $500 prize pack of boots, clothes, hats, everything. So it's a really good prize and it's running till the 10th of July. I think for us it's the feedback from the customers that they're watching their son play football um, on a live stream and they said, oh, I saw you on the live stream. And it's fantastic to see that the community recognises us as a, a local community business and can see us that we're giving back to the community that we support as well. Get your game face on. Welcome back here to Garvey Oval. Paul Sebastiani with you for the under 16 boys Div 4 grand final between Park Orchards and Hawthorne. It's the Park Orchards with a 17 point buffer as we head into the second term. And the umpire gets us underway, and it's Hawthorne who are going to win the first clearance up towards half four. They've got the numbers around this contest. Noonan was getting involved early. Crayer coming through, and the umpire's called a holding free kick. It'll go the way of Park Orchards, Crayer takes the advantage up towards half forward. And that's a fantastic intercept mark. So, look like Westmore getting across there to take that grab. Hawthorne trying to go forward towards center wing. Ball in dispute at the moment, umpire call play on Crayer, another clearance. They're getting up towards about 15 disposals early in this game, but that's a good mark. Well read by Joe Noonan. He can come across towards centre wing, a low darting ball out wide, just fell short of Postrenya. He's going to go back in there to try to fetch possession. Early was in there, Postrenya trying to win possession. Handball fell back towards Pekka, his kick was smothered. Umpire called play on and the ball slops itself into that mud pit right in front of the broadcast position. We'll have it tossed in. Even numbers around the contest for both teams. Getting involved was Cameron for Park Orchards. Getting wrapped up immediately was Pecker. Umpire crosses himself, says, I'll ball it up. 45, 47 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. They trail by 17 points at the minute. Trying to burst his way through trouble is Noble. Looks like it's going to be Park Orchards who can potentially get the rebound. 50 spinning his way through trouble of trying to get the full forward was Waddy. He did that indeed. Sutherland was there. Kept it out in front of himself. Got the little handball inside to Blasser. Umpire called holding the ball. It's better defensively from Hawthorne stopping that transition. Jones out wide. Bit of a helicopter pun up towards half forward. Off hands. And if it sits up for them, they could be in business here, Hawthorne. They've got numbers at the front of this contest. And one of those is Postrenya. And young Osta, Oscar Postrenia comes out, takes the mark, 35 metres out on a tight angle. Let's see what the young man can conjure up from this tough set shot. Postrenia, his kicks are high up, and I don't know when it's going to go across the face of goal. Off hands, three for one behind. 117 for Hawthorne to Park Orchard, 3 5 23. Let's see if. The sits can lock this ball inside their forward half. 
They'd be wanting to do so given the dangerous forward options that Park Orchards have inside their forward half. So, Drager gains about 15 metres from the goal square and his long ball outside defensive 50. Only went as far as Stamby and in the goal square. It's Burley. That's where the sits want him. Deep inside forward 50, being able to use his aerial prowess to full effect. So Edward Burley is pretty much point blank rage. Should be able to get the second goal of the day for the sits. And he has done so indeed. Two one thirteen Hawthorne plays Park Orchards three five twenty three on the Community Bank Doncaster Eastern Temple Snow Village scoreboard. It's Hawthorne going inside forward fifty again. Little tap in front that was smart. Alum kick off hands fell away fortuitously of Stamp. His kick around the body is chopped off though. Trying to burst his way through trouble is Nay Smith got into a heap of trouble though. They're under siege here, the Park Orchards defence. Might have been a throw, it comes out the back of the contest. Is that a hold? It is. Stamby will get the free kick from pretty much where Burley kicked his goal from only moments ago. And this will bridge the margin back to within single figures. A straight kick will bring it back to four points. And it is a straight kick. Has finally retrieved the ball. That's typical local football. Ball going out the back of the fence and take a minute or so to retrieve it as we get back underway here. So Keith trying to come through and win possession. Hawthorne Stamby, the goal kicker, got the handball up. Ball back inside, forward 50. Elam high up and under ball, not going to be the required 15 off hands. So. This time it's Noble trying to burst his way through trouble and the kick goes out of bounds on the ball. It'll be a free kick for the Bark Orchards. Pecker to take the resulting free kick. In the back pocket. He's going to go a spiral and he gets hold of it too. Good mark, Mariner. So Mariner pushing his way up from half forward. High ball. Towards half forward, Kraya, one of the targets there. He spun his way through trouble, got a clearing ball inside forward 50. It's touched off hands more, got the handball out. Jones has got crunched. And Moore will take the resulting free kick. So there's a cross half back here for Hawthorne. It's been sensational today. Defensively, Burley went up again. To take the mark was offhand. Stamby came through. One possession of the ball. Just got the handball away and a great smother. Over the boundary line and out of play. We'll have it tossed in. Pretty much smack bank centre wing right in front of the interchange gate here at Garvey Oval. So, on the Community Bank Doncaster Eastern Templestow Village scoreboard, 
It is the Park Orchards leading it by four points. 3-5, place 3-1. Ball in dispute across that muddy patch of the ground. Neither team able to win possession and we'll have it tossed in again. Having a look at the tall timber up the line here for Hawthorne. We've got Burley, Elam. A clear height advantage on their opponents. So from the restart, Noble laying a strong tackle. We'll have a stoppage here across centre wing. Again, even numbers around the contest. Crayer looking to get involved here again for Park Orchards. The handball came out. Fell into the lap of Noble. And he's helped over the boundary line. Fourteen and a half minutes to go of game time in this uh, first half. Stamby with a tackle on Crayer, unable to get free. And the umpire's plucked out a high free kick. So Crayer, high ball up towards half forward. It's fisted away by the Hawthorne defence. And again, the boundary line wins out and will remain... On this side of the ground. Another team really able to get their uncontested chains going through this patch. It's been a bit of a tussle here across centre wing and the umpire's going to call for another stoppage. Crayer going nowhere. Had a handful of players for close company there. So, Cantello this time. <laughs> Good to see him back out, out on the ground. Copped a bit of a heavy knock in the first term where he came off the ground. So, Crayer, oh, oh boy. That's definitely a high free kick again uh, to Crayer. So, and again, he's getting in and under. He's had a fair bit of the ball. He's definitely been the best on ground thus far. And the juggling mark almost taken, but over the boundary line and out of play. Debit seeing that one over. So, we'll have it tossed in. Cross half forward here for Park Orchards. They lead it by four points. 3-5 to 3-1 from the ruck contest. Barsley went up at the back. Tapped it. Stabby was driven into the ground by his curtails. Waterford. His kick up towards a pocket. And a mark. The last line of defence is taken. And now Hawthorne can potentially get a little bit of transfer going towards the outer side. Target out the back. Good mark. Postrenia. Got behind the football, he ripped out the back. His kick up towards a hot spot, almost the mark off hands. Bond was getting involved. They do well defensively here, the Park Orchards, stopping that slick transition play. And they get a clearing ball as well. Drago with a thumping ball outside towards centre wing. Good bump from Westmore to try to win possession back. He's going to go back in there alongside Hicks. Devitt getting involved around the contest as well. Stacks on. Hicks just got the handball out. And they get a clearing kick. Hawthorne, nearly a mark. May have been chopped across the arms where the umpire saw it as legal. Callock with a bit of composure. Gets the kick forward up towards half forward. Almost inside 50 for Hawthorne. Hovering around the football again was Postrenia. Little dinky kick off the ground. Elam. Just hacked the ball out, only went about five metres. It's a real tough, tight contest at the moment. Joshua Day hovering around the edge of the contest. He's almost going to get possession, had it fisted away from him. Ball back inside, forward 50 for the Hawks. It's off hands. Little tap forward, trying to break through the tra trying to break through traffic was Kellett. Just got wrapped up as soon as he won possession, but the ball out the back anyway, and they're going to get a goal through Luke Gabon. He had a chance only moments ago. But he was able to hover out the back and get on the end of some good contested work from Hawthorne and they wrestle back the lead. 4 one 3 5-23. The Sits take the lead by two points here. Ten minutes, ten and a half minutes to go in this second term. And the number 30 for the sits in Luca Bond. He gets his first of the day. So, 
ball back in the middle. The restart. Flicks out towards the wing. A clearance to the sits. They go up towards half forward. Bond did really well. Picked it up. Snapped around the body. Up towards a dangerous area. It's around about 25 metres out from the sits goal. Off hands. And this is snap up towards the goal square. It's going to go across the face and trickle out of bounds. And we'll have it tossed in in a dangerous area. From the restart, off hands, little handball out. Bond getting involved again. And is wanting the free kick for a hold. And the umpire's gonna he's gonna reward him with it. So Bond gets the free kick for a hold. Kicked the goal only a minute and a half ago. It's a very tight kick from a tough angle. It's trying to work its way back. It just faded away in the final moment and it goes through for a behind. So 4 2 26 Hawthorne, Park Orchards 3 5 23. Short ball out wide. Pecker, he's got time and space to find a target and he does. Cantello just kicks a wobbly one up towards centre wing Mariner getting involved little scrappy kick forward from Cameron into the middle of the ground stacks on this ball it's bobbling around again real tight tussle trying to step his way through trouble was noon and stepped into a wall good tackle turnover Cantello had his kick smothered paddled it out in front of himself got the tap and Crayer bursting through trouble Ball up towards half forward. It's off hands. At the back of the contest. Hawthorne have got numbers here though on the outside. And that kick's going to sail out of bounds on the ball. And it's marked by one of the interchange stewards. So Cantello coming up for another position in this chain of play. His kick. It's a nice one up the line. Good kick as well. Found his target in Mariner. Mariner just stops, waits, looks for a target, and the umpire's called a 50-metre penalty. He didn't call play on, and Noonan encroached on the mark, and Mariner will be brought within range. So, first 50-metre penalty of the day. Goes in favour of Park Orchards, and they can get this ball in their front half. We'll require his best from here. 4 2 26 to 3 5 23. Luke Mariner, he's kicked one mine on the day. He's going to wheel out to the right and give it all he's got. It's a thumping kick. It's up towards the top of the goal square. It's a mark on the line, is it? It is. Benjamin Jackson. A very contested mark. Stepped in from the side and plucked it out of the air. And he'll go back and give Park Orchards the lead. He does indeed. So back underway in the middle. 4-2-26 Hawthorne to 4-5-29. Park Orchards lead it. All that on the Community Bank, Doncaster, Eastern Temple State Village scoreboard. The sits go back inside, 4-50. Elam with a high ball up towards the top of the square. Off hands. And that is going to be rushed through. Now is that deliberate? 
no, he's called the behind, so. Fortuitous lead off there, Naismith running that through, and now the resulting kick in will be taken by Drager. He goes out wide to Naismith, who can see to the behind. And off a step, shoe out wide towards Sutherland, bounces in front of his feet, and it goes over the boundary line and out of play, so. Four minutes and 50 seconds remain in the second term. We creep closer to half time here at Garvey Oval at Parade College from the ruck contest. Newton went in there to lay the spoil after competing in the ruck, or, or the smother rather. And that's a, either a push in the back or a sling tackle or a dangerous tackle. Either way, it's a free kick going the way of Park Orchards. So. Wallace with a high ball up and under kick towards centre wing. It's off hands out of sight here at Garvey Oval. Plenty of players around this contest. Sits win the clearing kick. Ball falls its way to Donovan. Just worried out of it. And a high free kick will go the way of the sits. It'll be taken by Alexander Merry. Comes out wide with the kick and now they can burst off half back. High ball up towards half forward. Bond went up, through his hands. Ball in dispute, trying to lay a bump on his opponent was Donovan. Big tackle laid, couple in the crowd, one in the back for that. Probably should have been paid at the end of the day, but the umpire's waving play on. He's put the whistle away for this passenger play. So, again, the ball in dispute, again across half forward for Park Orchards. They win possession back, though. O'Keefe. High ball up towards the top of the square. It's going to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and trickle over the boundary line and out of play. So we'll have it tossed in. Deep inside forward 50 for Park Orchards. Trying to chase that one down there was Benjamin Jackson, the most recent goal kicker in this game for Park Orchards. Was able to take a great contested mark only moments ago to give the lead back to Park Orchards. And he's air contesting in the ruck again. He's in there trying to lay a tackle. Sits get the clearing kick though up towards half forward. It's all Park Orchards sitting under it. Taking the mark is Fletcher Cameron. He looked inside for the handball. And thought, no, I'm going to bomb this one up towards the top of the goal square. It's a wobbly old drop punt towards a forward pocket. A little kick came out of that contest there. Trying to get involved is Westmore. And the umpire is going to call a trip by the looks of it. Free kick will go the way of Westmore. He comes out with a dinky little left boot. And has that kick gone out of bounds on the full? I think it has. So Waterford take the resulting free kick. Comes inside with the ball. It's a smart kick as well. Really well done. Fordington takes the mark. 35 metres out slide angle. So Jack Fordington, his kick goes well out towards the right and won't register a score out of bounds on the full. So score remains 4-3-27 Hawthorne to Park Orchards, 4-5-29, ball up towards half forward. Naismith nearly took the intercept mark, wrapped up as he got his kick away and that skewed the kick out towards the boundary line. And looks like Wallace is happy to see that over the boundary line and he's going to take a break. Comes off the ground. Or it's rather a Benjamin Jackson who saw that over the boundary line. He comes off the deck for a break. So from the restart, Craze around this football for Park Orchards. Was wrapped up as soon as he won possession. Real tough bit of play here. Wallace just got the handball forward. It's all around half forward for Park Orchards. O'Keefe chasing hard after the football. Boundary line will beat them all though. So with 30 seconds left, you'd think Park Orchards are the only team who could manufacture a score unless the sits somehow break away from this rolling mall of a contest. Umpire hovers and other stoppage will have it tossed up. 20 seconds left in the first half. From the restart, 
ball continues to be in dispute. It'd be about 20 players around this stoppage, around this contest at the moment. Umpire hovering, three seconds left in the quarter, and that'll just about do it. And that is the half-time siren here at Garvey Oval. And it's the Park Orchards who hold on to a slender two-point lead. 4-5-29 to Hawthorne, 4-3-27. Goal kickers to the half. The Park Orchards, Crayer, Bugler, Jackson and Mariner with one apiece. And singles also for the Haw for Hawthorne. Bennett, Stanby, Burley and Bond all with one apiece. It's a two-point lead to the Park Orchards here at halftime at Garvey Oval of the under-16 Division 4 Boys Grand Final. We'll be back after the halftime break for second half action. Have you had your team photos done yet? Well, Frankie Photography is the only way to go. Great photos, great designs. Find out how your club can raise money by selling photos online. Check out our website for other great offers such as live premiership posters, end of season awards, tributes and milestones and gift vouchers are also available. Helen from Game Face here and I'm visiting Proven's Timber and Hardware today in Clifton Hill. Third generation owned by the Rosenberg family, Proven's is where you can come for all your extension and renovation needs. So my name's Marnie Rosenberg. Uh, my brother and I, Jared, run the business here at Proven's Minor 10 with our dad, Barry. So my grandfather bought the business in 1966 and now we're third generation and yeah we're serving the community and Provence has been around for over 100 years. We're super lucky most of our customers are extremely loyal so we get return customers all the time. Um, we do get customers who are doing their own renovations so we do support the local community um, DIYs. Um, we are predominantly a trade business but we love our local community and servicing them for all their flooring, your decking, your cladding, your mouldings, door handles, everything to do with the whole of house. Actually we're running a cat promotion so all the cat workwear, clothing and accessories spend $100 in a transaction and you go into the draw to win a $500 prize pack of boots, clothes, hats, everything. So it's a really good prize and it's running till the 10th of July. I think for us it's the feedback from the customers that they're watching their son play football um, on a live stream and they said, oh, I saw you on the live stream. And it's fantastic to see that the community recognises us as a, a local community business and can see us that we're giving back to the community that we support as well. Get your game face on. Here at Woodards Manningham, we love supporting our local community. Supporting the Yarra Junior Football League, we give you, the community, the best service possible. We have created a special offer for all our YJFL families. Simply quote YJFL to our property management team 
and we'll happily give you the first three months of your property managed for free. That's right, no management fees for three months on your investment property. Call us today, Woodards Manningham, 9842 1188. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks, but there's another big bank snapping at their heels. It's been around for over 160 years, has 1.9 million customers nationwide who bank in branch, online, or with their mobile app, and is regularly voted one of Australia's most trusted brands. Who is this bank that has everyone's attention? Welcome to Bendigo Bank, the better big bank. I'm Nick from Seafood Station. Um, I shot me and my brother opened a couple of months ago in Fairfield Village. Uh, we specialise in fresh fish, uh, predominantly local. Yeah, fresh uh, fillets, we do frozen seafoods as well. Um, a lot of fresh uh, crustaceans like prawns, uh, lobsters, um, yeah, and a lot of whole fish as well, locally, locally sourced, so yeah. Uh, look, it's more just for the people to sort of teach them about, obviously, the seafood market, the seafood, uh, the produce we have in Australia. Obviously, it's our business, it's a family generation, uh, three generation family business, so we've been in the game since 1959. Um, so yes, to me, my brother very passionate about our seafood, and um, yeah, so we like to get the community involved. We've got a broad range, so we are a lot of different species, um, from Australian, obviously, the seafood. It depends on the week, but usually salmon flat are the big, the big buyers, the big sellers, sorry, and we try to sort of teach people different things or try different things. It's obviously sustainable as well to sort of spread it out the, uh, the, the usage of the different species. Get your game face on. Hi there, I'm Matthew from Grange Meats Company. Uh, I'm the managing director here at our new store in Alphington. We specialise in dry aged meat, wagyu meats. We do a lot in the food service industry, a lot of hotels, restaurants. Um, we've got this beautiful shop.
Back here for the second half at Garvey Oval in the under 16 Division 4 grand final between the Hawthorne Six and the Park Orchards boys. It's the Park Orchards holding on to a two point lead as we come into the second half here. Paul Sebastiani with you. Set for a, a big finale to the second of three grand finals here at Garvey Oval today. It's the Hawthorne Six who took out the first of the junior grand finals and if that is a sign of anything to come this game is going to be a tight one but it is at the moment it's a two point lead to the Park Orchards and a high free kick is going to go the way early for the six so a little ball out wide from Westmore Noble Winds up on the left boot. His kick up towards centre wing. Off hands. Kallick. His kick or handball was intercepted. Burley just trying to punch it out in front of himself. Eventually one possession of the ball. His kick around the body. Crayer. He's had a heap of the ball. Definitely been the best on ground. Going up from the side was Westmore. Couldn't win possession. The Mariner getting involved. Interesting to see Burley's been thrown back behind the ball now. Playing pretty much predominantly most of the game in the forward half. And, well, Westmore was absolutely leg there and he'll get the resulting free kick across back, half back. He comes laterally. Kick is okay. Burley takes the mark, goes out wide with the kick. Handball inside. Donovan needs to be clean here. Nearly a turnover. Getting involved. There was O'Keefe for Park Orchards. Dinky little ball around the body. Hawthorne worked their way up towards centre wing, but it's going to be the Park Orchards who go back inside. Forward 53 on one in favour of the Sits. Westmore got involved. Sat on top of the ball and then was wrapped up by Mariner. Is that prior opportunity, umpire? Umpire lets it go. Ball flicks out of the contest. Crayer pushed off the ball. Westmore hovering around the contest. Donovan trying to get involved for the sits as well. Crayer again just hovering around. Cantalo got involved too. And the umpires called a free kick for a leg. Someone got tripped and no advantage. Ball will come back. Have a quick look out wide there. It's Westmore again. Another possession. Goes out wide with the left foot shoe. It's a good kick as well. So, great pluck out the air from Naismith. Showed his aerial prowess early in this game as an intercept down back and done so then again. It's ball up towards half forward and speaking of intercepts, Joe Noonan goes up and takes the mark unopposed. Cross half back, dishes off the ball. He's kick inside. It's a dangerous one, but those are the kicks that are going to have to start biting off. Stamby got involved. Just wasn't able to control the football at a critical moment there. Handball flicked out the back of the contest to Evans. Put his teammate under all sorts of pressure. So, they ran about eight or nine players over this contest, and the umpire is eventually going to call for a stoppage. So no change to the scoreboard from half-time. 4-3 plays 4-5 on the Community Bank Doncaster East and Temple Stowe Village scoreboard. Spinning his way through trouble beautifully is Naismith. Gets a kick out wide, but it's all Hawthorne here. James Moore has played a crucial role for the sits across half-back, and that is a delightful kick out wide. Burley takes a bounce. Long ball up the line. Off hands. Bugler. Stamby was there. Well done, though. Park Orchards. They do well defensively. Kick around the body. Moore went up. Jeez, he did really well there. He's probably been the best player on the ground for the sits. He's driving ball up towards centre wing. Crayer, speaking of best players, got the handball out in front of himself. Yeah, the umpire says, I'm going to throw it in. I don't think he was intentionally aiming for the boundary line. You could see from the broadcast position, his eyes were purely on keeping that ball in play and running onto it but just the bounce eluded him 
So from the contest, Stacks on the pill. Ryan getting involved and we'll have it tossed up. Right in front of the interchange gates here at Garvey Oval. So Rucks go at it. Big Ben Jackson got the tap down. Crayer may have been taken high. No umpire deemed it a legal tackle. Ball up. So Crayer's got Stanby for company. Stanby just pushed him off the contest. Crayer tried to barge his way through. Eventually did. Picked up the football as well. Was wrapped up as soon as he won it. Hot contest. Ball up again. Yeah, the thud off that contest. Cray getting involved there and a holding free kick will go the way of Park Orchards. This time it'll be to Bailey Wallace. So that'll clear up that contested passage there, but Moore again with an intercept mark. Looking for targets inside. Decides to go up the line. Push in the back. Free kick going the way of the sits. So Luca Bond, just kick one for the day, drives it up towards half forward. Lovely kick as well. Burley wheels and goes on the right foot. His kick up towards the top of, or towards the hot spot, around about 25 metres out from the sits goal. Ball comes back out and Bond is sitting under it and takes the mark unopposed. So Luca Bond can drive. Sits back inside forward 50. That's exactly what he does. Off hands out the back of the contest towards a forward pocket. Dangerous area here for Park Orchards. Again, no change to the scoreboard from half time. It's still a two point lead in favour of Park Orchards. And the step towards goal is just going to miss. So, one point lead. To Park Orchards, they get possession back from this kick in. They're going to go towards the outer side. It's a wobbly old ball out of Ward's half back. They're going to get the ball up towards centre wing though. One of the targets there for Park Orchards was Blazer. He can't win possession though, but they do track it forward. They get it back towards half forward here, the Park Orchards. And Jones, he had to be composed there. His kick is a high up and under one, only went about 10 metres distance. And Park Orchards are able to lock this ball inside their forward half. 15 minutes 45 remain in the third term. So from the restart, ruck contest. Neither ruck really able to win it. Ryan was in there. The clearing kick though. It's Park Orchards who get the clearance inside. Forward 50 from the back. Burley has covered plenty of territory today. More on the opposite foot. It was a scrubby old kick into the middle of the deck. Mary went in there, tried to lay the tackle. And Naismith got his opponent high. And piffed the ball back to Moore there. He probably wanted a 50 metre penalty, but he's going to get the ball back anyway. So he's in the middle of Garvey Oval. Unwinds a long ball up towards centre half ball. They all go off and a mark at the front of the contest. It's Bond. Look at Bond. So... The behind here will put the sits in level peggings, but look at Bonnie kicked the turf before he kicked the ball. Ball came out wide. Stanby was crunched. Crayer got back up. Stanby chasing back after the ball again. Ball right up near the boundary line. In dispute at the moment. And that is a let off for Park Orchards. Look at Bonnie. Probably on his time back again. After he stubbed his toe on the ground before he kicked it. But anyway. Stoppage inside forward 50. It was a ball up and now we'll have a throw in. Interesting to see the runner going out for Hawthorne sits and just ensuring that James Moore is behind the ball more than what he originally was and the shot up towards the top of the goal square. It's off hands. Scores level. 4-5 apiece on the Community Bank Doncaster East and Templestow Village scoreboard. Uh, and from the restart the ball works its way up towards centre wing and 
just the attacking side of the wing here for Haw for Hawthorne. In 4-5 apiece. Probably the best on ground for Baker Bunn. Choose your pick between George Crayer and James Moore for opposing teams. Again, we've had a fair few stoppages in this second term. Neither team really able to break out in an uncontested type fashion. A clearing kick, a hatball forward from Cameron. Works its way up to Devitt, who did really well to get in front of his opponent. Take the mark, his kick out wide towards Sutherland. Not the best. Devitt's going to get it back. Breaks a tackle. Handball inside was good. Cantello. He's back on the ground after copping a heavy knock early. Smart punch forward from Mariner. They can get on the end of it. Jackson. Ball inside, forward 50. Sheriff over the back. And he's going to chase back after it again. Tries to put a big block on. It's in there like a strong tackle. Crowd one holding the ball. And the umpire says, I'll ball it up. Good forward pressure from the big boy in Sheriff. So, ball works its way back outside. Offensive 50. Park Orchard's little handball over the top. Handball from Cameron. They go back inside. Forward 50. Couple of targets there. Big fist away. They've got the numbers here. The sits across the boundary. Broadcast side that's got to be holding the ball. It is. Free kick will be taken by Luke Mariner. And he dinks this one up towards the top of the square. They all go up off hands. Crayer wrapped up. Just got the handball out. Good tackle laid. We'll have it tossed up. So from the restart, Jackson tried to spin his way through trouble. Crayer getting involved again. Umpire calls for another stoppage. from the restart. Jackson won the tap. It's out the back of the contest. Trying to barge his way through trouble for the sits. Was Westmore. Got the clearing kick up towards half back. The Orchards are going to come back though. Waterford out the back of the contest. Sheriff. Was he taken without it? Crowd want the free kick. Umpire call play on. Burley just got the kick away and it's going to go out of bounds. The umpire wants sufficient intent. So, umpires have decided against that and they're going to go with a throw in. So, the stoppage on play here as the rucks get set. This one tossed in. Early got the front of the contest. Crayer had a fresh area at it. Stampy. Wrapped up as soon as he won possession. Park Orchards get the clearing ball. Sits have got the numbers here, though. Just hacking that ball forward. No real purpose behind it was Ryan. Almost a turnover, though, but the sits go forward. Off half forward. And off half back, rather, taking the mark is Wallace. He'll come towards the outer side now. Kick. Intended target by the looks of it was Cantello. He's tried to own that wing. Wasn't able to win possession. And let's see. Ball in dispute at the moment. It's a critical passage of play. Crowd wanted holding the ball on the outer side there, but the umpire's going to call for a ball up, so we'll have it tossed up. Just the attacking side of the wing for the Park Orchards. So, rucks go at it, and the umpire has called a free kick. Is it going to be a hold? It looks like it. Crayer will take the resulting free kick. Drive this ball inside forward 50. And there's that man again more. The two best players on the ground have just played played the ball into each other's hands there. So more. Off a step and a half. Drives it back up from whence it came. Crayer went up. Almost took the mark off hands. Handball out. Now the sits can go forward, although really well done defensively by Park Orchards, and they can lock this ball across centre wing. Handball came out, though, from Noble. Works its way towards the back end of the contest. Cantello again. 
Keeping his width, trying to hold possession of the ball, wasn't able to. The kick forward there was well smothered. Sits go inside forward 50. It's into a dangerous area. Wallace called into defensive duty. Made a good tackle on his opponent there in Elam. And the umpire is calling for a free kick. And it'll go the way of Wallace. So, for Strenya. Gave away the free kick. So, Wallace across fullback. It's called to go. High ball, up and under ball. Crayer sitting under it. Burley came in from the side, took it on the second bite and just went. High ball, inside forward 50 towards a pocket off hands. That'll go over the boundary line and out of play, will it? No, it's just kept inside the field of play. Now it's out. So, Kallick and Fordington just uh, exchanging pleasantries there. Seven and a half minutes remaining this third term. It's four five apiece. On the Community Bank, Doncaster, East and Temple Stow Village scoreboard. Crayer in there laying a tackle on his opponent. Stanby got the handball out. Crayer back in there. Maybe taken without it. Just kept trying to keep it in front of himself. Westmore got involved. Ball works its way towards centre wing. Mariner bursting his way through trouble. Kicked it out of midair. Jackson. Sutherland. Handball to Jackson. Ball. A high one inside forward 50. Sits have got the numbers back here. Hicks, he's got time and space. Finds his target out wide. So, Stanby, the target out there on centre wing, takes the mark. And in front of Bugler, he's high up and under ball. Over the head of his intended target. Handball back from Bond was okay. The Sits can potentially go forward here through Callick. Ball up towards half forward, almost a turnover. Well done defensively by the Park Orchards. And we'll have it tossed up. Six and a half minutes to go in the third term. 4-5 plays 4-5. Clear best players on the ground for Baker Bunn have been George Crayer for Park Orchards and James Moore for the Hawthorne Sits. So, from the restart. Clearance initially was smothered. Means it's a turnover in favour of the Sits, and now it's a turnover in favour of Park Orchards. They go forward up towards centre wing. Moore again out the back of the contest on his opposite foot, which is his left, works it up towards half forward out the back of the contest. Heap of players around this one. Trying to burrow his way through trouble there is Ryan. This all around about 45 metres out from the Sits goal. And the umpire has called for another stoppage on play. So it's been a really contested brand of football in this third quarter. And the conditions have been the main effect on that. It's a real muddy ground underfoot. Rain has stayed away, but the cool conditions have meant the ground has stayed super wet. Really hard to get those handball chains running about. So Park Orchards go up towards the middle of the ground. Turnover City, though. The Sits win possession back more. Was he taken high? He was. That was almost a Jack Ginnivan-like high free kick. Getting the shoulder up there. More smartly played. High ball up towards the top of the goal square. They all fly up. It's off hands. It's around about 15 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. And we'll have a ball up. So Burley getting involved as well. He's going to nominate himself in the ruck. He's going to go up, get the fist down. Bond may have been tucked without it. He's in there to lay a tackle. And the umpire has called for a free kick against Bond. So it looks like Fordington will take the resulting free kick deep inside the deep inside defence. High border Mariner out the back of the contest. Stanby. Takes pretty much an uncontested mark and off a step up towards the hot spot. Is it a mark? It is. Burley. He is the most dangerous forward on the ground for the sits when he does go up. It's interesting to note he was actually swung down back for a moment in this term but has shifted himself up forward and he's taken a sensational contested mark. Any score here will put the sits in front. And the shot on goal has just snuck its way through. 
Five five thirty five plays four five twenty nine. The sits regain the lead. Mark Orchards did have a, a game-high 17-point lead at quarter time, and that has been whittled away, and it's now the Sits who sit in front by an even goal from the contest, maybe in holding the ball. So, ball fell the way of Kallick. Just got himself into a little bit of trouble. Merry around the body, he's kicking to the middle. Stamp, he's in an acre of space if it sits up for him. His kick out wide's a beauty as well. Sits a building here inside forward 50. Bond the target, had it well fisted away from him. And the shot towards goal is across the face. It'll trickle over the boundary line and out of play. And with two minutes remaining in the third term, the Sits have got it locked inside their front half. And they're going to try and camp this share in here to try to hold on to this one goal lead, if not extend it. Burley tried to punch it forward, but we'll have it tossed in yet again. So who's going to step up in this critical stage? Devon won the contest. Got the tap down. It was a smart tap down too to Waterford. He got the clearing kick. Stamby though, standing strong, takes the mark. He wheels and goes on the right foot. It's a purposeful kick inside 450. Burley went up again out the back of the contest. And the snap towards goal is only through for a minor score. It's a seven-point lead now to Hawthorne. 5-6-36 to 4 5 29 on the Community Bank. Doncaster East and Templestowe Village scoreboard. Paul Silvestiani here with you for Gamecast. Little ball out wide. It's okay, or oh, drop mark under pressure. Burley laid the tackle, went back in there. One possession from the boundary line. He's kicked towards the top of the goal square. He's great. And it's an easy goal to Joe Noonan. Inside a minute to go in the third term. And the seven point players worked the treat. 6 6 42 to 4 5 29. been all one-way traffic in the back end of this third term and with less than 30 seconds remaining Hawthorne is in the box seat heading into the final term of this Div 4 under 16s grand final the Yarra Junior Football League has given us two crackers thus far so from the restart Five seconds to go. What can either team manufacture? It's a clear. It's in the way of the sits towards by Mary towards centre half forward. And the siren sounds for three quarter time here of the under 16 Div 4 grand final between the sits and the Park Orchards. It's Hawthorne leading at 6 6 42. It's a 4 5 29 here at three quarter time on the Community Bank Doncaster East and Templestowe Village scoreboard. Goal kickers. It's a three quarter time. For Hawthorne, it's two to Burley and one each to Westmore, Stamby, Bennett and Noonan and singles for the Park Orchards to Crayer, Bugler, Jackson and Mariner. That is the three-quarter time break here at Garby Oval. We'll be back with the final stanza here of the under-16 Division 4 Grand Final between Hawthorne and Park Orchards. It's the Hawks leading it by 13 points.
Well, there is no rest for the faint-hearted here at Garvey Oval. Three-quarter time break is over, and we are underway in the final stanza. It's the Sitz leading at 42, plays 29. It's game on here in the final term. Crayer gets Park Orchards moving forward inside. Forward 50 they go. Ball off hands. Moore just... A handball eluded him. Devitt with a shot up towards a goal square and a mark. It's an early mark. In the goal square to Bugler. And he will line up from pretty much point blank range to get the Park Orchards off to the best possible start in this final term. So Bugler. 15 out. No real angle to speak of. And he helicopter and mongrels it through for a goal nonetheless. First goal in this turn towards a plenty road end of the ground. And it is a goal to the Park Orchard. 6-6 six, six, place, 5-5. Five, five. So... Crayer getting involved early, getting the clearance and getting Park Orchards wriggling along inside 450 to create that goal. Let's see what they've got from the restart. Big fist forward. Burley wrapped up as soon as he won possession. He was crunching the tackle. Umpire says, give it to me. So, from the restart. To Park Orchards who win the clearance through Waterford. They work it up to the middle of the ground, but this time it's Westmore sending the ball back the other way. They all stand under it. Bond went up at it, well fisted away from him, though. In fact, it was by his own teammate in the end. Little handball, but no look handball from Day. The ball goes inside, 450. Can they get a mark? They can. So the sits can respond immediately here. In the opening handful of minutes, it was Bugler who kicked his second of the day a uh, moments ago to bridge back the margin to seven points. And now the Sits have an opportunity to get the margin back out to double figures, and they have. Responding goal, 7-6 plays 5-5 on the Community Bank, Doncaster East and Temple Stone. Village scoreboard. I can probably pencil that in as one of the goals of the day for Yarrabeen Golf Club. The pressure, he was under to manufacture that set shot and put it through the big sticks. An important goal in the complexity of things here. The 13-point lead to three-quarter time is restored for the sits from the restart. Noble was in there. Big tackle laid. Umpire says, I'll ball it up. The attacking side of the centre square for Hawthorne. 
from the restart umpires plucked out a free kick here for a rucking infringement it's going to go the way of park orchards it'll be finn doherty to take the resulting free kick and he drives this ball up towards around about half forward devitt went up it was off hands and the umpires called a free kick Crayer, he was held without it or he was blocked off the ball either way it's going to be his free kick he can drive, Park Orchards inside, forward 50. Mariner, the target, was tackled, and the umpire will call for a ball up. Wasted no time calling that. 19 minutes to go in this final term. Game in the balance, 13-point lead. So Mariner had his kick smothered. Ended up winning possession back there. Trying to burst his way through trouble. Kick up towards the top of the goal square. Dangerous area for the sit. Just hacked out of midair, and Wallace... Right spot, right time, takes the mark. 40 metres out directly in front. So Bailey Wallace, let's see what the young man can conjure up. Might be a little bit too far out to score. Gives it his best though. It's right up towards the goal line. Off hands, Mariner in there. This time it's Westmore getting a clearing kick away from a dangerous area and they get it. Over the boundary line and out of play, do they? Yes, they do indeed. Naismith tried to keep it inside the field of play, but the umpire had blown his whistle and will have it tossed in. So 7 6 48 to 5 5 35. Paul Silvestiani here with you for Gamecast. All this live vision proudly brought to you by them. And great smother there by Crea getting involved in that passage of play. Bomb though. He ended up picking up the clearance from the sits and they work it up towards half forward. Well fisted away from Burley. Ended up falling back into his lap. Just got the handball away. He fell as he got rid of the ball and was taken high. And I reckon he's cramping up a little bit. So time will continue to tick down. He's got a double cramp here. By the looks of it, he'll get back up and take his kick. So, Burley. He's kicked two goals today. It's a high ball, an up and under kick. Bond sits under it, almost took the mark, had it well fisted away from him. Try to work their way through his trouble. Joshua Day fell towards Cray, and he just threw it on his boot. Almost a great mark there to O'Keefe. Had to beat two Sitz players and stepping his way through trouble, doing really well. That Sitz defender there in Noonan worked it up towards half forward. Helping the ball over the boundary line is Pekka and we'll have it tossed in. So they do have a spare up the line here. The Sitz. And that's Jack Westmore. Closer to the contest, though. Underneath it was Luxton. Kick up towards the top of the goal square there by Noble. Off hands right near the boundary line. Bond trying to get involved. Noble, he tried to shark a handball over the top, but the umpire had already blowed his whistle for out of bounds. And a free kick and a 50-metre penalty. So he's plucked a free kick and a 50-metre penalty for the Park Orchards. Ball into the middle of the ground, chopped off there by Stamby. He's in there trying to win possession back. Is it going to flick its way out to Noonan? No, it's going to come out instead to Westmore. Dinky little kick up towards half forward. On the left boot, Noble swings it up towards the top of the... Well, the teeth of goal, almost the teeth of goal. It's around about 30 metres out instead, and Bond gets on the end of it. Takes the mark, 30 out. Tough angle. Favour the right footer though. So Luca Bond probably deserves more than a goal for his efforts. So Bond steps out to the right a bit, tries to work it back. He just works it back a little bit too much. And it's a behind. So 7749 to 5535. 14-point lead to the sits. So high ball out. 
from half forward. Stanby went up on the second bike, couldn't take it, had it fisted away from him by Westmore at the end. High ball going up towards the goal square, and it's just rushed through for one behind. Pecker getting back on the last line of defence to rush that through. So it's like Wallace will take the resulting kick in. He does indeed. Thumps this one up the line. Mariner the target. Fell out the back of the contest. They were clean there. This sits little handball away from Kellock. And he sees the ball over the boundary line and out of play right in front of the commentary position here at Garvey Oval. It's a 15-point advantage to the sits. At the moment, they look on track to go two from two in their grand final appearances today. 7-8 plays 5-5. Five, five. Stamby just hacked it on his boot up towards half forward. Naismith chopped it off, kicked it up the line. Mariner the target. Devitt just paddled it back. And Jackson took his opponent home. And Moore, just a little bit worse for wear after copying a bit of treatment from Jackson. So Moore goes short to Dinky Ball. Finds Kallick, who's in acres of space. He goes long, up the line. Bond! Front spot. Great mark. And he goes with a chipping ball inside. It's a good kick as well. Finds Joshua Day out on a lead, and he can kick from 35 metres out on a 45-degree angle. Or maybe a little bit better than a 45 degree angle. So with 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining, Joshua Day comes in and tugs it to the left. So a little bit of a let off here for Park Orchards, just keeping them in at these misses. 7 9 51 to 5 5 35. They've got to somehow manufacture a way out of their back half here. So the kick-in will be taken by Drager. Short ball from Pekka. You can get that ball up towards centre wing. It's a good kick as well. Crayer takes the mark, and it's a finny. 50-metre penalty. There was someone or something that happened off the ball, although, no, it's a free kick up the field. So free kick up the field. Looks like it's going the way of Cantello. And he goes with a low darting ball inside. Is it a mark? It is. Mariner plays on. Had his kick smothered. Moore. Was he taken high? He was. Played that beautifully. Here James Moore. He's been sensational down back for Hawthorne. High up and under ball. Burley the target. Bond went up. Could have taken out the back of the contest. And now the sits are right here if it sits up for him. Just fumbling it at a critical stage. As Noble, he'll have it over the boundary line and out of play. And we'll have it tossed in just the attacking side of the centre wing here. For the sits, they lead it by 16.79 to 5.5 on the Community Bank Doncaster Eastern Templestow Village scoreboard. From the ruck contest, Orchards try to win possession. Coming through to meet the ball was Kallick. Could have win possession. No ball. He snap around the body. Bond was a target. Crayo wraps his opponent up. We'll have it tossed up. So, ball slapped forward eventually by Ryan from the ruck contest. Luxton was wrapped up, may have been taken without it. Umpire said it was okay. Cameron tries to win possession of the ball, stepping his way beautifully through trouble there. Was Westmore kick up towards the top of the square? Bond went up through his hands. Bond goes back in there. He dived on top of the footy. Was he ridden in the back? He was. So Bond. We're going to have to start this towards the right-hand side goalpost from what we saw in his previous set shot. So just under 10 minutes to go. Luca Bond 
He starts it out to the left and it stays there and hits the post. 7 10 52 plays 5 5 35. So, ball out wide. Marked by Crayer. He wastes no time, but Moore again, another intercept mark. He's probably worked his way up to around about seven, eight, or nine intercept marks in this game. Reads the ball so well in the air. His kick up towards half forward. Burley went up and crashed in front of his Park Orchard's opponent. I think it might have been Fordington, and they're both down for the count here. Fordington more so than. Burley, and there's a free kick going the way of Crayer, but we might just have a stoppage on play for the time being. Fordington is down. Looked like he copped a knee to the midriff. Getting back and going back with the flight beautifully there is Westmore. Comes out wide. Noble wrapped up as soon as he wins possession by Naismith, and we'll have a toss up. So 7 10 52 plays 5 5 35. Fordington is still down at centre half back. We'll keep an eye on him. Doesn't look in a good way. The trainers are with him from the ruck contest. Callick, Crayer, bursting his way through trouble. Got the little one too. Kick is a wobbly one towards the middle of the ground. Not the best. It's chopped off. And the sits can go back the other way here through Hicks. Comes out wide. It's a good kick. It's okay. Finds his target in Callick who worked his way towards the outer side. His kick out wide. Always going to be kept inside the field of play. It is Burley. Got the handball away. It was slung as he handballed it over the boundary line. Out of play. We'll have it tossed in. So, Fordington just looks like his left arm is holding it gingerly at the moment. And looks like he'll probably be done for the day. But from the restart, Burley got the handball out. And this shot towards goal is going to sail through for a behind. So... Another point. It's almost death by a thousand cuts here in this last quarter. Seven minutes 30 remains. 7-12. Or 7-11 rather to 5-5. So. Traeger goes long with the kick in. They haven't been able to get it out there. Back half here. Kallick. He's had some important moments in this final term. His kick is a high up and under ball. Only went as far as Naismith who chops that off. So Naismith off a step, high up and under ball towards centre wing. And this is the part where they need to be better, better and Mariner comes out, takes the mark. Now what's he got up further afield? Goes with a high, long ball up towards half forward. Crayer sitting under it, but what a mark by Westmore. Sensational intercept mark. And look at that, off a dime. Steps out in his left boot. Gets it out towards Noble. His kick just misses intended target. Spinning beautifully out of trouble was Pecker. And his kick is a beauty as well. Bugler. His kick around the body. Westmore was in there. Cameron. Take it without it. And there's a high free kick. It's going to go the way of Park Orchards. And they get this ball inside their four and a half. Time is of the essence. Those six minutes remain. And he three goals to somehow pinch it. Pecker. Long ball inside forward. 50. Is it a mark? It is a mark. So Jackson, a tall timber, getting involved for Park Orchards. Just has to kick this goal. Has to kick this to give his team a hope. Jackson trots in, and that's way out to the right. It's not even going to register a score, and it'll be out of bounds on the full. So, you would think James Moore here, he'll just try to run down the clock and thump this up the line, and that's exactly what he does. And Burley goes up, almost takes the mark off hands. Sutherland in there for Park Orchards. A high clearing ball, though. It's a spiral up towards centre wing. Bond came up, had it well fisted away from him. A couple of players get involved here, but it's Hawthorne. Through Noble, they were clear out there, but a good rundown tackle, great rundown tackle by Drager. Sensational play. He drives Park Orchards back up towards centre wing, and there's going to be a free kick off the ball here. 
Looks like it was Westmore who was bumped off it without being able to contest for the aerial contest there, and he'll get the resulting free kick. So Westmore has had some important moments in this final term. Drives this one long up the line. Is it just going to stay inside the field of play? No, it's out of bounds on the full, almost off hands, but be Pecker to take the resulting free kick. Four and a half minutes to go in this one. Now, if they could somehow get a goal from this play, they still do have time. Little handball out, Jackson. Dawoody, kick around the body. Easily chopped off more again with another intercept mark. It's been the intercept king for Hawthorne in this game. Goes up the line again with the high kick. Bond goes up from the back. Didn't really make contact with the ball at all. He crashed the pack though. That was probably the main thing he wanted to do. Cameron with a kick out wide. They've got numbers here though, Hawthorne. They can clear it up towards half forward. Ball out the back and now it's a foot race and this could be it. The sits are in business here. Kavish with a ball, and this is going to sail and sail and sail and not make the distance and be rushed through. So three and a half minutes to go. That should just about see it off for Hawthorne. 7-12 to 5-5. Five five. Driving ball outside from Drager. And the umpire's called a holding free kick to Park Orchards, but by the looks of it, it'll be to little avail. Crayer. He'd be definitely the best player on the ground for Park Orchards. Just a matter of whether or not he'll get announced as a player on the ground, but his boys are probably not going to be able to get the victory. And goodness me, Westmore went up and almost took a specky. They've gone up a few times, these sits players but just haven't been able to reel those leaps in as of yet still time for a mark of the year contender though strong mark sitting under the ball bravely was newton goes quickly inside 450 they're out the back if it sits up for them it's a three on one big tackle laid and the umpire is going to call for a stoppage so two minutes to go rucks nominate not many of them, though. Stamby went up, just plucked it out of the air, and he snap is going to go across the face and through for a behind. So this game is all but fizzed out now. Two minutes to go. Hawthorne sits are going to be the under-16 D4 Premiers. It's going to be two from two for the sits on a day where we have three grand finals here at Garvey Oval. Sensational day for junior football. Burley being slung down back now. Comes out to intercept the ball. Gets the sits back inside. Forward 50. Chopped off by Wallace. Goes back the other way. Couple of players go up to contest. Ball still in dispute. Park Orchard just trying to manufacture a kick forward. It goes towards the offensive side of the wing. Lockie Jones getting back for Hawthorne. He's wrapped up immediately. And the umpire calls for a ball up out of side here as we tick down the time a minute ago it's going to be a good victory to the sits Westmore slung as he kicked it it's a beautiful kick though vision was great found Kallock he's on the outer side Stamby's all alone inside forward 50 ball comes out wide here and there's a few of them lining up here and one of those Sits forwards, gets on the end of it, and they will have a shot at goal. Wind down the clock, and that'll be just about it. This will probably be the final shot on goal. The sits under 16 boys in D4 are going to be premiers. All set up by a big final three quarters. They trailed by 17 points at quarter time, but have been able to wrestle it back. High ball up towards the top of the square. Burley went up offhand. Stamby, it's rushed through for one behind. Siren imminent. You'll hear the roar in a moment. So 
So uh, Hawthorne sits uh, under 16s, Div 4 Premiers. Final score here at Garvey Oval on the Community Bank Doncaster Eastern Templestowe Village scoreboard 7 14 56 to Park Orchards 5 5 35. And the goal kickers for both teams will start with the Premiers. It's two to Burley. And then singles each to Noonan, Bennett, Stamby, and Bond on the day. And for Park Orchards, two to Bugler, one to Crayer, one to Jackson, and one to Mariner. But uh, 21 point victory in the end to Hawthorne. It probably could have been a little bit more, a little bit of inaccuracy in the final term but they were able to put the game to bed. 7-14, 56 to 5-5-35. It was one straight 6 to 4-5-23 at quarter time in favour of Park Orchards. Hawthorne wrestled the lead back. Three goal to one second term where the margin was only two points in favour of the Park Orchards. And then, as we said, they were able to wrestle the lead back in that third term. 6-6-42 to 4-3-29. And then the final score of 7 14, 56 to 5, 5 35. It ended up being the last three quarters, six goals to one in favour of Hawthorne, and they have run out to win the under 16 Div 4 Premiership. Paul Sebastiani and Gamecast bringing it all to you. And uh, we'll be back after the celebrations. We'll keep vision on these. Interesting to see who the best player on the ground was for Baker Bunt. Probably has to go to George Crayer, and it's going to be interesting to see that two of the best on grounds, if they are announced, will go to the losing team, actually. So Crayer was fantastic, and probably the best player on the ground for Hawthorne was James Moore. So those are the two players who can get it for Baker Bun. But uh, it is a Hawthorne sit to a Premiers, and the 16 Div 4 winners. Second of three games is complete, and will be set for the final game at 3.15 p.m., so stand by for that. Thank you. 
Hand over to uh, the winning coach, Paul and uh, Katrina, come up here. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the umpire. Uh, great, great work for you guys. Tough job. And uh, we love you guys down here.
So let's say you throw a few times to Tom Dorsey on the other side. Uh, Joe, the guy is close to the end. Okay, good. Um, and also the umpire. So, uh, the umpire, thank you. Thank you to Aaron for coming and supporting us so great. And thank you to our fans. China. And uh, assistant coach Sage is out there. Uh, they're sending another letter to you. So, uh, yeah. Thanks. Well said. Well spoken. Now, guys, just two more things. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, it was a great day. The weather held out. But, Matt Paul, goes to you. And Matt, is your penalty. Well done guys, thank you very much.